Hey, I'm Lauren from That Sage, and today I'm going to show you two really simple lighting setups for your food photography scenes using just one light source. Artificial light is something that I think quite a few food bloggers and photographers shy away from because it can be technical and it can be a bit complicated and if you've never used it before you may not get the results that you're used to getting with natural light. I want to show you two really simple setups that are going to give your food photos two completely different looks but using the same light and softbox. So when I began my food photography, I would always shoot using natural light. Natural light undoubtedly gives an amazing look to food photography and it just has something really special about it. So when I started using artificial light, I was just really disappointed with the results. It never looked quite as good, it never looked really authentic and I couldn't quite get the hang of how to make it look like natural light. One of the benefits of shooting with artificial light in photography is just the consistency that it offers. Natural light is very changeable, so from minute to minute the sun could move, the clouds could move and the colour of the light can also change, meaning throughout one shoot you've got a much harder editing process to keep everything looking consistent. So with artificial light you have complete control over the light and your camera settings and once you've set it you're good to go for the whole session which is going to cut down your editing time and give you really great consistent results. Artificial light is also more flexible than natural light. Because you're completely in control of the light source, you can be a bit more creative. And as you start to challenge yourself more, you'll find yourself able to do more things which you're not able to do with natural light. So for today's shoots, I'm gonna be using one continuous light and one softbox. And the light that I'm using, it's a Pixapro LED 200D Mark II. And for the softbox, I'm using a 150 centimeter octagonal shaped softbox with double diffusion. Now these lights, they're not the cheapest out there, but they're also not the most expensive. And I find if you're really wanting to take your food photography to that next level and have equipment that's gonna last you a really long time, investing in one really good light and modifier is gonna allow you to keep challenging yourself and use it for years without needing to upgrade. So one of the things that I love about this light particularly is that it's a continuous light. So when you're shooting with a speed gun or a flashlight, the light will just trigger when you press the shutter, you'll get a burst of light and then it's gone. With a continuous light, the light's on all the time. So when you're looking through your live view or your tethering, you can see the results on the screen. So really what you see is what you get and it makes it much easier to set up your scene and know what your final photo is gonna look like. This light also has LED bulbs, so they stay very cool, which is a great thing when you're shooting food because you want to eliminate any unnecessary heat sources if possible. It's also really energy efficient, meaning you can run it for ages and ages and ages and it's not gonna use a ton of electricity. And the LED bulbs also have a life expectancy of about 50,000 hours. And when I got this light, I figured out that means you could have it on continuously for like over five years. And one of the last things that I love about this light is the CRI rating, which is a, a rating that measures how white the light is. So this light particularly has a CRI rating of over 95, which means it's pretty close to daylight, which is gonna help you when you're setting your white balance, keeping things really on white and not leaning towards blue or yellow too much. So the next thing is the modifier. Now, arguably, I think the modifier is more important than the light itself, because the modifier is what controls the size of the light source. And the bigger the light source is, the softer the light will be. When you have a very small light source, the shadows around your subject are gonna be really hard and defined as if you're outside in bright sunlight. But when you have a soft, big diffused light source, it means that the shadows are gonna be a lot more gentle and soft, and in food photography, generally softer light produces better results. You can shoot with hard light from time to time if you particularly wanna achieve um, a certain artistic look, but generally I tend to go the bigger is better for food photography. Now the particular softbox that I'm using is 150 centimeters, which is quite big, um, but I find it allows me to have the effect of if I was shooting next to a massive window with natural light. So it really helps me achieve the same results as if I was shooting with natural light, but with the benefits of the control, the color, and just the general consistency that artificial light can give me. So even if you don't have room for a 150 centimeter softbox at home, Pixapro also offer sizes from 48 centimeters in the Easy Open S-Type range. So the last thing to bear in mind when choosing the size of your softbox is how far away from your scene your softbox is gonna be. Ideally, you want it to be as close as possible without being in the shop because even a massive softbox will produce hard light if it's too far away because the size of the light source is relative to how far away from your scene it is. 
One of the best things about this particular softbox is it has two diffusion panels, meaning the light is diffused through two sheets of material rather than just one. The advantage of this is it creates a much more evenly lit look across the front of the softbox. When you only have one sheet, the middle of the light can still be a bit brighter than the edges, which can affect the final look of your photo. So by having a second diffusion sheet, it allows the light to spread really evenly, giving you a nice, big, bright, even light source. So now I'm gonna show you two different ways to light the same food scene using this light and softbox. We're gonna do a backlit version and a side lit version to show you just how different the final look of your photo can be using the same light and a reflector. Lighting in food photography is a great way to emphasise the specular highlight on the top of shiny food. In this case, the olives with their coating of oil look even more appetising when they have a nice glow around the top. To backlight, place the softbox behind the food, higher up and angling downwards so you don't just end up with a silhouette of your food. You're not aiming to have the light visible in the shot, so getting the angles right is really important. Make sure you've set up your scene with the focal length lens you want, then start moving your light around to find the optimum position for your shot. When backlighting, the use of a reflector is pretty important as the front of your subject is facing completely away from the light source. I'm angling the reflector directly opposite the softbox so the light can bounce directly back onto the front of the food. For a side lit shot, I'm going to position the light on a slight diagonal to the food to give the shadows a bit of direction and again I'm going to angle the light slightly downwards onto the set. When setting up the scene, you can play around with the direction of the light depending on the angle you're shooting your scene at. So for a top down shot, you may want the light a little higher up and pointing down on your scene more and for a straight on shot, the angle of the light will change the depth of your shadows. For this shot, I'm going to place a reflector directly opposite the light to fill the shadow slightly, creating a light, bright look. If you're going for a darker, moodier look where you want the shadows to create a lot of contrast on your food, you can either not use a reflector at all or even use a black fill card to absorb more of the light and really accentuate the shadows. Don't forget to check out the blog post that goes with this video to see more information and diagrams about the lighting setups, angles and directions. So there you have two really simple lighting setups using the same one light source. I hope you found this video useful and you can now go away and recreate these looks at home and try out some new things in your food photography. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already and I will see you next time. Bye!